All right, welcome back, everyone. This can be another uh, spot check episode. So this is uh, the focus of these new spot check episodes is I'm finding uh, spots on VK or Discord, other resources, and sort of seeing what they're doing, setups they're using, and then trying to fish there for an hour or close to it and seeing how we do in comparison. See if it is as advertised or close to as advertised. So that's what we're about to do here. It actually did not list a specific silver amount uh, in this one. And plus part of why they posted this is they call it a trophy whiting. So you're not gonna hit a trophy every time anyway. Um, and the other problem is they fish for longer than an hour. So even the silver amount they list on their screenshot includes well over an hour of fishing. So I will say that if you take away the trophy, which the trophy cost was 225, uh, and you cut it down to an hour, I would say we're talking 600 silver. I think that's a fair representation of how good it was for them in this spot. So let's go ahead and start the timer. Um, so it is 3.15 a.m. in game as a start time. Uh, hopefully we'll catch a fish pretty quickly and that will also be an easier thing to use as the, uh, as the start time as well, or close to the start time. Um, and I will, I guess after we catch this first fish, I will pull up uh, exactly what we're using during the, this time of fishing. So we are fishing down here on the 41 meter bank. Uh, I am gonna let it drop to the bottom. I don't know for sure if that's what this person did. Uh, based on their catch, they did catch a lot of small fish, but that's based on what they have on. I would say they caught enough sculpin and pollock and stuff that they probably did let it drop and they didn't just like perk it at 20 meters or something. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And what a banger of a start. Atlantic herring is an amazing way to start this hour. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at what we're using here. We're back at the Lurker 107. A lot of, a lot of spots lately have featured the uh, red Lurker, but this is back to the blue classic Lurker. Blue fire stick, white fire tube. 6-0 hook, that's interesting. A little bigger hook than usual. Small fillet safe. Uh, you could also do strip with this kind of fishing. We're not catching, mostly we're not catching huge fish. I am using the 60. Uh, to be fair, they were using, f no, they were also using, they were also using 60, although they do have 55, um, kilo fluorocarbon leader instead of shock leader, if I'm reading this correctly. Uh, I think that's correct. But it, anyway, it's, it's around 60, what they're using. There is a drop shot as a part of this setup, which I'll show you after this next fish. I just didn't want to um, spend too long away from the screen where we're seeing the fish. So we're trying to stay in this lower left quadrant as much as possible of the 41 meter bank. And so I'll try to keep an eye on that and move the boat if we need to. I'm sure anywhere on the 41 meter bank, you would do quite well with this setup but we're trying to stay in this lower left quadrant. Okay, so after this, the drop shot, we have three O hooks on all three. We have two of the natural squid 1204 with uh, fluorescent beads below. And then right here in the middle, we're running the Kraken shrimp 1302 with white beads. Notice this is the larger version of the Kraken natural shrimp which always interesting to see, what did we catch it? Yes, 1204 squid, we caught the Atlantic herring. So it actually was not on shrimp, it was on the squid. So that's the setup we're using. And we're gonna give this, a, give this a little while and just see how well we do. Second fish, not as impressive as the first, but at least it was a marker. We're gonna see some small fish because of the size squid we have. These are small squid. Um, and then just the, the lurker in general, one of the smaller lures, but the idea is that we also see some decent pollock and maybe whiting if we're lucky. That was the trophy he called or he or she called, by the way, this was Valerie Zaken is who posted this. I always like to give credit to the spot poster, uh, which is a little weird when you're fishing at 41 or 34. 
it's not actually about the spot at all. Everyone fishes these spots pretty much on the daily if you are at Norway. But it is slightly different when you look at different approaches to the spot. So in this case, I think using these natural squid is a little different than your typical approach might be. All right, there's a five kilo cusk. Don't mind seeing that. Um, versus uh, oftentimes you either see things like the homemade, uh, handmade foam fish or all shrimp to really go for the small fish. So this is kind of an interesting setup. I just, I liked the look of it and I was curious how it would, how it would play. So that's, that's kind of what got me into the idea of doing a spot challenge with this person's setup. So three fish in so far looking good. It is, um, I will say because of how light the squid and shrimp are, so this particular setup, it takes a, quite a while to get to the bottom. So if you end up not catching too many fish on the drop and you're actually waiting for it to get to the bottom, then this might be a little bit slower in terms of like amount of fish you catch in an hour compared to setups that either are going to live in that top 20 meters of the water or setups that can get to the bottom a little more quickly, if that makes sense. So uh, in the in an hour time, this person is saying that they caught, let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, somewhere over 40 fish, not 48, but somewhere like maybe 43, 44 fish, something like that. So I guess we'll see how we are five minutes in with four fish. We'll see how it averages out for us. I think once we're a little later in the day, we will probably see a few more fish on the drop. So far, we've not had a whole lot of that, but I think that will increase. I can almost guarantee you that will increase when it gets a little bit later in the daytime. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. Right now it's making it down to the bottom and then oftentimes we are hooking into the fish before we even have a chance to close the bail in that bottom area. Yet to see our first whiting. That could be a time of day thing, we'll see. But it looks like it's trying to do an average not an average, but like an estimate. It looks like they caught, let's see, one, two, three. And they were all close together too. Oh, there's some down at the bottom, four. So it looks like they had about four whiting in an hour. And one of them was a trophy, which is sick, RNG. That's amazing. Um, but even just in general, whiting are really good fish to catch. They are worth a lot, XP and silver. So to have them mixed into your normal fish that you're going to catch in high volume in a spot like this is uh, certainly has the chance of pushing it to the next level. All right, so this is where the fish normally hooks in. Let's see if we actually reach the bottom here. Yep, there's the bottom. And it's still, still drifting. We'll close it up though and start perking a little bit. We should get a bite here almost immediately. There it is. The lures we're using, the approach we're using, it's so um, high volume type stuff that it's hard to fathom, maybe like at two in the morning or something, but it's hard to fathom that you could like perk this for a long period of time and not just have a fish get on there. whiting are notorious for hitting it on the drop so i would say anytime we hit a have a fish hit it on the drop we're immediately thinking safe pollock but we're also hoping that they may occasionally be whiting 
so far a lot of sculpin one cusk kind of typical for the overnight early morning hour uh, I suspect that we'll see less cusk and maybe less sculpin as we get again sort of 8 9 a.m. And, and beyond but we'll see so now we have in eight minutes gotten the full top line of six fish and it does look like this person threw away fish that were not markers I'm not sure that I'll do that we'll see but uh, for what it's worth they did throw them away doesn't look like they kept them I guess we will I don't know non markers are worth so little silver it actually probably doesn't impact the the uh, comparison at all but This will be fun to see what fish we catch after perking it for a minute here. Hmm. Might just be another sculpin. We can hope whiting, but pulling it off the bottom like this, still pretty early, I'd say it's probably probably a sculpin. Although if this is a sculpin, this is a decent one. Yeah, I was right, and that is a decent sculpin. There's a sculpin order that at least it was up earlier when I did my last uh, spot check earlier today. I don't know if it's still up, but I think the sculpin actually had to be like 1.7 something. And I don't remember how many you had, but I, I don't, I think the... I just don't think we'll catch that many sculpin past. Look at this, 3,200 XP for a non-marker herring. And I'm always curious, can we turn that into... Yes. Now, I don't think... Let's double check. I don't think we can do a fillet of herring with that, right? No. Okay. Um, but we can do dead fish if we want. We don't want to do the marker, but the non-marker, mine as well, just in case later today or something, I decided to do something with dead fish, but okay. And we're back. I do like seeing those, uh, those herring come in. It's kind of, it's not quite as powerful of a addition as the whiting would be, but it's pretty nice. All right, hit it. It's turning me into a liar with this making it to the bottom and actually requiring us to perk a little bit, although that was quick. So very small. I don't even know what we're hoping here. We're hoping it's probably not gonna be a squid on 41, but we're some, hoping something weird and small that's valuable, not just like a tiny sculpin. Uh, okay, that's not what we're hoping for. I gotta tell you, you know, we're gonna we're gonna keep it straight here on the the test we're doing. But if I was experimenting, I would put on the 200 gram lurker and see if it makes a noticeable difference on the drop rate. That is the one thing I'm noticing is the drop rate of this setup. For the quality of fish that you're expecting to catch, this slow of a drop is a little bit of a downer, but. It's not too bad since it's only, you know, 45 meters or whatever.
So the lurker caught the place. We haven't seen too many fish getting caught by the lurker, but with the, with the small lurker on like this, you expect to have it happen some. Okay, here we go. First fish on the drop, especially on the drop this high in the water. Remember, we're thinking safe, pollock, whiting, or haddock. I mean, you know, depends on how many haddock there are in this spot. And by the way, that size safe, we will definitely turn into some sort of bait. We'll just do large fillets. I think large fillets is what we're probably lowest on. Tell you right now, what did we call this? 600 silver? We need to pick it up a little bit. We need this spot to just pick it up a little bit. We need some decent pollock or something to hit. Whiting, pollock, something to. Maybe some dabs. I think those are pretty good silver. A dab or two will do it. Clappy and Bubble K's just both brought in decent long head dabs as we're sitting here in chat. So it's the time. This is another cusk, not what we want to see. Nine gram, 15 gram. These squid are actually so light and squid are notorious slow droppers anyway. If I was recreating this setup, trying something a little different, instead of just challenging this spot directly, I would uh, at least take one of those squid off and put something else on that maybe gets us down to the bottom a little faster. That's another way you could go instead of going the higher lurker weight. Love it. All right, so most likely safe, but you can always hope it's a really nice whiting uh, or a pollock. You know, this could be a pollock. But even if it is safe, it's going to be uh, a marker, unlike that last one. So we'll take it. Someone else just caught a safe in chat. So sometimes they come out in, uh, in multiples. Yeah. So an eight kilo safe, that's very nice. That will definitely help. Larger fish worth a little more silver. We like it. And we did catch that one on the drop, which also is good. Quicker turnaround. Four point six safe. Not as fun as the last one, but pretty good size safe and good for some of the more common cafe orders. Mm. Is this another safe? That's the size that we want to be whiting, by the way. 2.7 kilo.
Okay, this is going to be a small fish, we hope. Oh, no, it's not. It's European hake. So we can't tell the comparison because they didn't keep the non-marker fish. But we're seeing a few mixed in so far, pretty low percentage overall. Even with the ones we've turned to bait, it hasn't been too many non-markers. So we're at 18 minutes, 6, 12, 14, not quite a fish a minute. Actually, if you, yeah, it's less than a fish a minute, especially if you take off the non-markers. So I'd say right now we're a little under average on the fish per minute average this person posted, although we have started to see them come in on the drop a little more. Uh, so during the day, we might increase our own average a bit. We'll see. Overcast day. Can't tell what the weather was like for, for this person. They did not put that in their post. And none of the picture screenshots they showed has the, um, the weather in it. All right, let's just see what this is. I guess I'm going to lock it up. Cause we, this, is, this is all about volume fishing. We don't want to spend a long time on one fish. Um, so yeah, now it's partially cloudy, 5.6 degrees Celsius at 1130 in the morning. I, you know, this feels like a safe, I hope it's a pollock or a haddock or something, but the way it sort of was strong in the beginning and then really loosened up on the the amount of pull or tension. Oh, it's a cusk actually. Almost six kilo cusk. So that is cusk number three, five, five point nine, two point seven. A little later in the morning than I expect to catch a cusk, but All right, whiting number one, unfortunately, is a very small one. Good to see it, and maybe it's a sign of things to come, but that was a very small one. And that is the difference. You start to get, you know, there's, I don't know how many, 10, 15 fish an hour that can really determine how a session goes. That's a nice mackerel size. And, and a lot of it has to do with, yeah, just the, a few fish that you catch. Were they a little bigger, a little smaller? Did you get that one trophy? I mean, that's a huge difference in how well you do one hour compared to the next. But I like the sign of that mackerel. Hopefully they keep up. Let's see how many mackerel we see in his bag. One, two, yeah, there's actually quite a few. I'd say seven, eight in an hour, so. <clears throat> Shouldn't be a surprise that we hit a mackerel here right now. This could be another one. Oh, that's a safe for bait. Got to get some safe for bait. Three kilo safe is like no man's land. Probably best to turn it into bait, but I don't know. We'll hold on to it for the purposes of this, for this, of this uh, video. I feel like we're getting a higher percentage of safe than this person did. One, two, three. I only see them averaging one, two, three, three safe, at least that they kept in their hour. And 
we've got four plus we've turned two or three into bait. <clears throat> so the spot was advertised, I don't know, about a day ago, or the spot was reported about a day ago, like the report that I'm basing this on. So, you know, again, in, in a 24 hour period or whatever, the spots, this sh certainly could have changed a little bit, got a little more safe heavy or whatever. But it seems like overall we're seeing a pretty good representation of the same species of fish that this person caught. Ours are just a little smaller on average, at least in some of key places like the whiting. Okay, love to see this. This is what we just need to see a good bit of here for a while, go on a streak of some nice fish. But we want this to not be a cusk. Kind of feels like a cusk though. It's 120 in the afternoon. Nice place, 2.7 place, wow. That's actually a really nice one, that helps. That helps. He also had one really nice place, but it was just over a kilo. So we are, in that, in that one little example, we're actually doing all right. All right, on the drop. One of these just needs to be a surprise whiting. We have seen zero Pollock. That's the one like significant difference in his net versus our net. Another safe. He is showing several Pollock and some decent ones. And we have zero. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, of the top two lines of fish in terms of like silver amount, five of them were Pollock. So that's going to impact the amount of silver per hour taking that fish away. Oh, we ate a carrot. This is gonna be a good fish. Ooh, interesting. Is this gonna be like a little, little safe, I guess? I mean, at first, with all that bouncing, I was hoping like a spiny, but it's kinda not, now I'm afraid it's just a small safe. Yeah. Okay, 27 minutes, we're almost halfway through. We're actually, I mean, if you take away the non-markers, I still would argue that we're maybe slightly behind in number of fish. Quality, I have no idea. I, I feels like we're way behind, but I could be wrong.
All right, it's another place. At least it's a marker, but it is a good bit less than a kilo. Okay. Ooh. 363, that's tiny. Did he have any dab? No dab. So that's a that's a bycatch. That's an outlier. Uh, of course, if we had a nice size dab, it's that's going to be huge. That's going to be very helpful, but that one's not going to help much. That was on the squid, by the way. Hmm. Is it uh, four in the afternoon? Yeah, it's a little slower this time of day. We haven't had to do this in a while in this spot. I actually work for it a bit. Hate to see it. 105 gram whiting. Unlucky, unlucky. I am really curious where we go from here. The second half of this spot, which we are now into the second half, is going to be really key. Uh, if we're going to, you know, come close to even, even being in the ballpark of that 600 silver mark that we've set. And again, that's an estimate because of the trophy, because of how long they fished for. We just tried to come up with an estimate to give us a, a goal to reach for. And I think it's going to be tough for us to hit it unless we, at some point during this last 20 something minutes, go on a streak of really nice fish. I would say we're on pace to end up in the, maybe the 400 range. So we, we, we really got to step it up if we're going to come close. And I might even be overshooting that a little bit. How many sculpin and cusk we have. I might be overestimating even what we have right now. But it's not over yet. Let's give it a good go. Love to see on the drop. We need to be efficient and we need to see some 
the right fish at the right time here. Not the right fish. I just keep hoping one of these small safe is going to be a whiting and really like turn our fortune around. Safe. I, I think that uh, 41 has turned into a bit of a, a bit of a safe farm, which if you need bait, that's great. But if you're trying to hit, uh, 600 silver an hour, that's, it's not great. It's just not great. I mean, safe or okay silver, certainly better than some of those sculpin will be, but um, they're low to mid tier for sure. I like seeing we're getting more and more on the drop right now. This is hopefully going to be good. Although the amount of safe, wow. And that's with at least, I think four now being bait. So I mean, we are at six, nine, 13, lucky 13 safe, something like that. And we've pretty much stayed in the spots that we wanted to stay in. I had thought that we would be a little farther out like drifting this way more but at this point I don't think we want to change we just want to stay and hope for a slight change of fortune here So more safe than there was 24 hours ago, but also more dab. That 481 gram dab is actually big enough to be a chat, show up in chat, not just a marker, but a chat dab.
All right, Sculpin are starting to come back in to chat, which means we can start catching them again, which is not the best of news, but we could still have some nice fish mixed in with the Sculpin and the Cusk, I suppose. <laughs> Something else that did not show up in this person's net was a lump fish, although they did have one very small spiny dogfish and outside of the hour of fishing, so like in the second hour of fishing, or maybe it was in the first hour, not in the second hour, they had a uh, small to medium size wolffish, spotted wolffish. So still some differences for the most part, the keep nets are looking similar. Ours is just a little uh, safe heavier Theirs was a little bit um, whiting heavier and nicer whitings, especially with the trophy. But even without the trophy, they they were uh, making a lot of their silver off of whiting and pollock. By the way, we've had zero pollock. That more than the whiting might actually be what what robs us of this uh, of this face off here. Ooh, like to see it, but okay. Well, even if this is safe, this is going to be a really healthy one. Is the good news? The bad news is, if it's a safe, it's going to take a while to get it in. This actually might just be a what, like a twelve kilo cusk or something, or ten kilo. Let's see. It's at least fun to see a little bit bigger fish come in than what we've been catching. But the question really will be, in terms of how much it affects us, is what species is it? We've just got it locked up. If I didn't have it locked up, it would be pulling line, uh, which we don't want, obviously. We want to keep this a fairly efficient fishing process, but having it locked up like this does mean that we're using the mech weight. So we're wearing the mech a little more instead of wearing out the friction brake like this. It's not too heavy though. Like it, it seems like it's impossible for it to put me in the red, even even as I'm sort of jerking it back up, it's not really going in the red. So it's not a it's not a monster. It's not even that close to pushing us on the 60 kilo limit, but it would it would definitely be a pain to get in without being able to lock it up. Ooh, cool. Well, we know from the last challenge that a turbot that size is at least worth decent silver. Now that took a, a ways, it took a time to get in, but uh, I think it's worth it for an eight and a half kilo turbot. What are we sitting at, by the way? 42 minutes? We've still got some time. That fish helps a little bit. I mean, it doesn't like make a huge difference necessarily but it helps a little bit heaviest fish of the day so far not a surprise okay This is most likely a safe. I would love to be proven wrong one of these times, but this has that safe feel to it. Four point six.
Safe. It is, it is a different body of water in this spot right now in terms of the amount of safe. Just, it's just different. All these safe scared some other important fish away like the Pollock apparently. Let's just get one Pollock before our hour's up. That would be fun. There are safe sounds. And that sounds a lot like a safe to me. Eight point two. Second, nope, that is the biggest safe. Now that size safe, especially since we were able to get it in pretty quickly, you can actually sort of put that in the column of that actually helps. Okay, we knew that was probably going to happen. Sculpin start coming back on the line. I don't want to change our approach this late in our session since we're trying to pretty much recreate what we think this person did. But if you wanted to try to avoid sculpting, you could keep it off the bottom and see what kind of bite rate you could get just kind of perking it at different depths. But I don't know. That might, might not be the play either though. interesting fish just barely has us locking it up Mm. 
So, uh, I don't see any cod in this person's net. So, we're going to call that a bycatch, an unlucky bycatch. I mean, it's big enough cod that it's, you know, it's, it, it'll be worth a little bit. But you would much rather have, I mean, honestly, you'd rather have a 16 kilo safe than a 16 kilo cod. 16 kilo anything that we're catching, a, a, a cusk, uh, safe, certainly pollock. Those are game changers. 16 kilo cod, not a game changer. I accidentally just picked it up off the bottom, but we still got a fish either way. Two, three, four, five. So 33 currently that are markers. What did I say he had? 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 3, 44. So we are running a little behind, I think, both in quantity and quality. But I mean, it always surprises you, even when you feel like you're not doing that great. I think it always surprises you just how well you've done at Norway. Um, and cafe orders may not be perfect for what we're doing right now. But a lot of times they are. A lot of times we would we would hit two or three cafe orders with this net. I'm just not sure that right now that's the case. Uh, this is another interesting fish. Really hope this isn't another cod. Oh my gosh! It popped off. So. Am I going to actually extend this ticket? I guess I have to if I want to get the hour in. It's so frustrating that you, you know, I guess I got to start. Oh, that's a nice mackerel here at the end. I got to start using two hour tickets for these videos because it always is going to take 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes to get out to the spot at Norway, according to where you're fishing. So. And most people do usually show, or it's easier usually to think about spot uh, comparisons in hour chunks. So uh, right now we're at 52. I mean, we started at like, what, three something in the morning. So technically we need to fish for at least a couple more hours in game. I gotta buy buy some more tickets soon. Although it is possible that this will be a fairly slow end. You never know though, we could catch that one spiny dogfish that could make all the difference. Oh man, that last fish got off. We really don't wanna miss this fish. I mean, that last fish could have been a a really good fish. I was saying we hope it's not another cod and it probably wasn't. Um, so that's a huge loss. We certainly don't want to lose this one. This is strange. This feels so much like a shark to me. Um, but we haven't been catching shark. So it's just another cod. Oh, 
Oh. Now that makes me wonder if the last one was also COD. All right, is there consistency in what we caught them on? Lurker and Natural Squid 1204. They're just active at this moment. Unless we're really getting punished here, which is not a COD. <laughs> this might be a sculpin though. It's 148, just gotta watch the time. We are very close. So I think we cast in at three something. We're showing 55 minutes since that first fish. And we can probably justify a couple, two or three more casts according to how quickly they go, but we're getting there. We are getting to the end here. Hmm. Gotta learn how to set those rods and reels up. <clears throat> it can really set you down if you don't do it right, set you back if you don't do it right, and then you're losing them. What do you need to handle them? You know, you just got you, what you need is to learn how to set up the rig properly so that if it is too much fish for you to handle it's just break, breaking a leader or at worst the line not your rod and reel two sculpins in a row it is 224 we are still okay on time but not by a lot this might be our last cast just to be on the safe side that we don't go over an hour be a little bit of a shame to finish up with two cali uh, caliber, two uh, sculpins. Someone just said caliber. That is true. If you're trying to go after grass carp, you should at least be using a caliber, I would say. Ca grass carp are nasty. Very strong fighters. But that's not the root of the problem. The root of the problem is figuring out how to set up rigs so that you don't break things. I was going to say, I think it'd be really funny if that last fish was a, uh, was a, like small whiting again. All right, we're, we're gonna call it because, you know, we're getting really close. We're, we actually probably could do one cast and, and be feel, feel okay about it, but we're gonna just call it there. All right, so notice that I'm traveling to Mosquito and then I'm gonna travel back to Norway. This is not a good habit for you to develop unless you have the Norway house, which makes travel free. So I did this because I traveled for free to Mosquito and then I traveled for free back to Norway. And so I'm not costing myself anything with these travels. But if you don't have the Norway house, then that is a very expensive 
uh, expensive mistake you've made. Oh wait, we don't want to look at that yet. All right, so let's see how we're doing here. The first thing I want to do is buy price and go ahead and get these nine markers out of here. Okay, now let's do automatic. And um, total amount is 504. That's closer than I thought. Now we did not hit the 600 mark. Um, but, but I knew this place, holy cow, this place. And you know, I was wrecking on the cod, but actually it's our third highest paying fish. And then look at the herring and the lump fish. So you kind of knew and you forget these decent sized cusks, man, they add up. Look at that mackerel on the second line. Very cool. But this turbot, you know, you start thinking about like, okay, well, what if we hadn't caught a couple of these fish here at the top? I mean, that's that's brutal right but you know you can't really look at it that way if we hadn't caught those we might have caught something else really nice so i i think that's actually pretty good uh 504 we did not we did not meet the challenge obviously we came underneath the challenge um now we're going to end up catching up with some of these cafe orders i mean there's a 150 silver um Oh man, if you knew that that one, that would be an easy cafe order to go after right now. So anyway, 150, does that catch us up? It probably does. Yeah, I mean, that puts us well over 600 silver. So at the end of the day, we did really well, as you always do pretty much at Norway. Uh, but this was the first time, or you know, this is only the second time we've done this. Compared to last time was the first time that we did not meet the challenge and actually catch as much fish as was advertised or make as much silver as was advertised in the uh in the posting on vk so either way uh it's always fun to do these let me know if you are enjoying this sort of um i don't know this little approach uh, it gives me something to focus on I often, if I don't have time to stream, I often have time to like make these hour long videos and it feels like this might be a fun way to do it. Not just here at Norway, by the way, I do want to occasionally do these challenges at other water bodies as well. But um, thanks for watching Tight Lines and uh, I will see you next time. Let me know in the comments what you think, but until next time.